brought to you in living color on NBC. And she wrote to me and told me that when she lived here in the 1890s with her mother, she, the mother frequently met the ghost of Nell Gwynne. Now, although the monks, of course, have been gone for over 400 years, you can very much still feel the sense of them here. And I heard what was quite definitely chanting. It was coming in uneven waves off the hill opposite the house. But she's fading, slightly fading. And I don't think she'll be coming to this house much longer now. They were talking about ghosts. Ghosts they've seen or heard or felt. This was not idle talk. These people truly believe in their ghosts. Most of the people you've just seen, some of them titled, live in England's stately houses. Their normal surroundings are mansions and castles, going back 500 years or even more. The house behind me, Salisbury Hall, is historic and haunted. Roman soldiers once kept their watch here, and ever since, great and near great people have lived and died here, so naturally it shelters ghosts. Ghosts inhabit four out of five of England's historic houses. You do not find mention of these ghosts in the guidebooks. It might be bad for business. The business of attracting tourists to stately houses at half a crown a head. Let us then invite you behind the facade the tourist sees and tell you of strange tales. Some frightening, some beautiful. All remote from today. For our research and to tell our stories, we chose three experts. Every theatre-goer knows and loves that most English of actresses, Margaret Rutherford. Few know that she happens also to be a true believer in ghosts. So too is Tom Corbett, one of London's best-known society clairvoyants. With them, we present her husband, Stringer Davis. This is their story of what they found as they tell it. With every mile, we were traveling deeper and deeper into the West Country. As we passed Stonehenge, that enigma built by an unknown people in the dark time before history began, I remember Mr. Corbett turned to me and said, You know there's an affinity between Stonehenge and Longleat. How true that is. In its vastness, its grey strangeness, Stonehenge set the key for the house we were about to visit, the Wiltshire home of the Marquis of Bar, Longleat. Today, Longleat is a magnificent relic paid homage to every year by thousands of tourists. It was built to be a family home, but now only a few of its hundred rooms are occupied by Lord Bath's eldest son. The gardens are meticulously cared for, but no one plays croquet anymore. There is no bustle in the servants' hall. The beautiful furniture has a frozen, unused look. The great Longleat collection of books, one of the finest private collections in the world, today stands immobile and unread upon the shelves. Up in the nursery, there are marks on the wall to show where generations of children have stood to have their height measured. But there are no children now. In 1735, something happened at Longleat which brought horror to the house. An atmosphere which has never left it, which has touched each generation, charging the air with an unhappy restlessness. Lord Bath told us the story at dinner over port. Now what I want to tell you is the legend of Longleat. I don't say it's gospel, mind you, 
but there have been some, how shall I put it, uncanny happenings which prove it as near as damn it. It all began in about 1733 when my great, 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 great grandfather, the second Viscount, married and brought back to Longleat the beautiful and lovely Lady Louisa Cartridge as his wife. Her beauty and her charm and wit had been the rage of London and society was absolutely thunderstruck when she married my ancestor, who, I have to admit, wasn't much of a chap. The marriage wasn't successful. It was at one of those many balls held at Longleat at the time. Louisa met and fell in love with a young man. We don't really know who he was. We only know that he returned her love and that it was a very tempestuous affair. One night, Weymouth happened to discover them together and challenged his rival to a duel, being careful first to lock his wife inside her bedroom. The duel ended in tragedy. The lover was killed. Louisa Carteret died soon afterwards of a broken heart, they say. And as if he were a guilty man, Viscount Weymouth shut up Longleat and went to spend what was left of his life in the nearby village of Horningsham, leaving behind him an empty house. But was it empty? Ever since then, the corridor where the duel took place has been filled with a restless, unhappy atmosphere. Down the ages, people have told stories about it. They tell of a green figure that wanders along it, of the sound of weeping. Gradually, it has become accepted that the spirit of Louisa Carteret has bound itself to that corridor, searching always searching for her dead lover. Well, that's the legend as far as it goes. But we do know that the Viscount left Longleat his home never to return. And during recent years, we have made an uncanny discovery, uh, which I'll show you later on. Now, I've never actually myself seen or heard the supernatural. But I can remember in my lifetime Servants walking, oh, miles round the passages, rather than to go down that corridor at night. And in any case, I can promise Mr. Corbett sufficient work for any medium here at Longleat tonight. Oh, Mr. Corbett isn't a medium. He's a clairvoyant. Mediums claim to be in touch with the spirit world through a guide, a long-dead man or woman whose job it is to bridge the gulf between the living and the dead. But clairvoyants make no such claim. I just happen to be born with a gift. I can see ghosts. I can't exercise nor tell them to go away, but when they're around, I can see them. Well, if that's the case, we might as well get on with the job. Uh, but before we go to the haunted corridor, I would like to introduce you to my librarian, Miss Coates, who says she's actually seen the ghost. Oh, yes, please do. Well, it was not so much a matter of seeing with one's physical eyes as of feeling something very sinister in a particular spot in that corridor. It happened during my first week at Longleat when I was trying to find my way from the Red Library up to my bedroom. Instead of arriving there, I came to a corridor on the top floor where I'd never been before. As I was walking along, there was a turn in the corridor and I made to go round it and was immediately 
enveloped from my soul, must say, with an atmosphere that was so terrifying that I couldn't go on. I pulled myself together after a second or so and tried to move on, but the atmosphere got stronger. It was full of hatred and violence and something worse than that, something really evil. It literally paralyzed me for a few moments. We are going there now, Miss Coates. Would you care to join us? No, thank you. I, I never go there now. The ghost is known as the Green Lady, but I always think that to be somewhat of an embellishment, prompted really by the fact that Lady Louisa had a portrait painted in a green dress. And in any case, as a matter of fact, the people who've seen the ghost testified to it being greyish in colour. Well, ghosts rarely manifest themselves in colour, Lord Bath. They're usually described as grey or whitish grey because that's the general colour of the ectoplasm which surrounds psychic manifestation. Might we go round that corner? Thank you. Just up ahead. indeed a sad part of the house. Yes, I think it is. And this is the scene of the great tragedy. Well, then why was it sad then? Where the, the Viscount Weymouth yeah. slain his wife Slava. Can't you feel it yourself? Yes. The unpleasant and, and, and rather hair-raising atmosphere of this corridor. Perhaps we can bring a little cheer from I our own we lives. Can. See here, by those two pictures, we have the ghost of the man who was murdered. He comes back here. You wouldn't think he'd want to come back, would you? Well, uh, one can only assume if uh, uh, that he's coming back to meet his Loved one. Yes, that's... When that he was, was undying and nothing could alter it. That, of course, was it, wasn't it? Well, he was separated from her in this life. Yes, yes. So I suppose it is natural yeah. that he would want to find her in the next. Yes. Well, I hope he did. It's slowly fading. Mm -hmm. It's very dear of her to come, isn't it, and see us. It occurs to me, Tom... Would it be possible to record such a materialization as we have just seen uh, by means of um, camera lens? Yes, but never in color. However, there will be many pictures of ectoplasmic manifestations recorded in black and white film. There's the famous photograph taken at the island Nielsen seance, during which time the spirit of Queen Astrid of the Belgians made her appearance. And this is she was in real life. The famous picture of the ghost at Raynham Hall, the home of the Marquis of Townsend.